So let's talk about modesty as a woman. I probably have said this a million times before, but, you know, it's never too much to say it a million and one times. The children of God, they are special. They're called a peculiar people. They're set apart from the world. We're in the world. We're not supposed to be of the world. Um, and so one of these things in which sets us apart is modesty. Now, a lot of people, they come and say, oh, well, you're supposed to have a modest heart. That's true. That is the most important thing is to have a modest heart. You know, you can have a very immodest heart and be fully covered. However, if you truly have a modest heart, then it will also show outwardly um, with your actions and even with your appearance. The father gave even the Israelites a certain garment to wear. I believe they had to wear a long linen tunic with a breastplate. Um, they had to wear an overcoat of wool and a turban. That was for the Levites, like the male priests. Um, and then, you know, the everyday Israelites, they would typically wear tunics, both the male and the female. Um, the women, I believe, wore longer tunics. The men wore pants under their tunics. And so, you know, there was slight difference in clothing. But regardless, you know, they were very modestly dressed. And this was even in the summertime. Oftentimes, you have to pull Christians' legs to get them to understand that they are supposed to dress themselves in modesty. Um, I don't really understand why it is. If he tells you not to look like the world, not to be like the world, and you're steady trying to do both, then you're not actually walking in Christ. The reason why this is important for both men and women, but especially women because they seem to struggle with it more, is because... This walk isn't only about you and what you can get. It is also about being your brother's keeper. So when you come outside and your belly is showing or your breasts are showing and your thighs are showing and all this kind of thing, what do you think is the message that is being sent out to the world, especially the men that are walking past you, whether they are your brother or not? Like, if you're dressing exactly like you did before you came to Christ, it's showing that you haven't been refined in that area. You are inciting lust inside of other people. And don't get me wrong. Men can be lustful even if you wear a burqa. Okay? That's just what it is. However, you want to play your role in not inciting that lust for whomever that, you know, it might be curved to. And so there are better ways for us to dress so we don't do that. Um, I know that First Timothy and I believe First Peter, they both talk about how it's not about your adornment, okay? Like, don't worry about your adornment. He even said don't worry about clothing, period, because he'll provide all those things. And I've definitely seen it where he has provided all those things. Like, I was at a Feast of Tabernacles the first year I became a Christian. And um, I had prayed for certain things. Like, I wanted a denim shirt, some black leggings, and a couple other things. Well, this girl had ended up leaving the campground where we were having Feast of Tabernacles. And she went into the city because we're out in the middle of the country in Kentucky. And she said... She came back with this huge bag and she's like, this woman just gave me all these clothing, like a huge bag of clothing. And then we opened it up and I swear to God, like everything I asked for was in this bag of clothing. <laughs> Tell me that's not God, okay? You know, you don't just be out in the middle of the country and everything you ask for shows up immediately. Come on. Tell me he will not do it. He will do it. That's who he is. He said, ask and you shall receive. It can be as small as that. But anyway, moving forward, the father calls us his rubies. Like he says, we're worth more than rubies. Like, so if you are worth more than a ruby, why are you presenting yourself like a piece of tin? All right, here, let me, let me get to this scripture right here. So Proverbs eleven twenty two, like a ring of gold in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. So discretion can apply to, you know, a variety of things. It can be just a lack of good sense, um, just being too open with certain things, but you can also use it in terms of how you dress. You know, when I went out, you know, I wasn't leaving anything to imagination, that's for sure. I thought like, okay, well, the less clothing I wear, the more attention from men I get. And maybe I'll snag a husband that way. But, you know, it's very rare that that happens. I'm not saying that it never happens, but it's very rare. Um, but now that I know God, I know my value. And so me personally, I'm not going to go out with my chest showing. I'm not going to go out with my stomach showing. I'm just not going to do it because that's just not a good representation of Christ. And you're going to attract attention that you don't necessarily want nine out of ten times. So, you know, ladies, if you're a Christian, you need to cover up. You decided to come in this walk. You decided to hand over your life. Then you have to hand over even certain things as how you dress. I think what we have to realize as Christians is in the world, you know, they're very concerned about things like fashion. And, you know, to an extent, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, looking up to date. I personally don't quite care as much. Now I'm kind of more into, okay, does this match and is it clean? <laughs> Um, and there's certain styles that I do like for sure. Uh, but I always try to make sure that 
does this honor God when I go out because, you know, we want to be good servants for him. And so that's usually the first thing I think. Does it honor God? Does it match? Is it clean? Uh, maybe is it clean first and then does it match? But, you know, we're not dressing for ourselves anymore. Um, a lot of the fat time fashion is demonically inclined. I remember like being in fashion at OSU and I had all these drawings of all these quote unquote cute outfits. And like they ended up on the ball main runway. It was weird. It was like, how did everything I thought of in my head end up in the ball main runway? You want to know why? Because the same demons that were influencing me were also influencing Balmain. Like the dresses that I was making, they were sexy, low cut, short, sharp. It looked exactly like this Balmain runway this one year. And I said, that's so weird. You know, maybe I really am supposed to be a fashion designer. So God ended up taking away fashion from me for like probably a good three years. And then finally, my friend was like, I don't think God's going to have you stop designing clothing. And I was like, OK, whatever. Like, I'm not going back to that vain lifestyle. And then probably the third time my friend said this, father opened up the Bible to Proverbs 31, where it talks about how she makes linen garments for her people. <laughs> and I was just like learning about linen at that time, because look, linen has a frequency of 5,000 along with wool. And so both of these fabrics have the ability to heal you. I think that's why he had um, the priests wear linen garments, these long linen garments. They represent like holiness in the high places of the father so anyway uh it's, i just like died because i was just like oh my gosh like you put this gift in me for a reason but he had to get rid of what the devil corrupted you know my nasty designs and replace it with something holy his designs and so it was funny too because i had asked after i learned that you know well i need to learn how to sew and so i asked for a job and i got a job three days later learning how to sew <laughs> crazy you cannot make this stuff up so you know, eventually when I'm in the kingdom, or maybe sooner, who knows, uh, I'll be sewing some linen garments for my folk, you know. Because he puts those seeds in us for a reason, you know. We don't just love to sew. We don't just love music. We don't just love art. We don't just love working on cars for no reason. He has a purpose for all those things. He gave us talents. So anyway, got off on a tangent a little bit there. I mean, the video was supposed to be about modest dressing. Um, but yeah, hopefully when I do do my designing, I can come up with some really cool modest garments. I mean, they're not going to be super crazy. I like to keep it simple and functional and beautiful. And, and that's kind of my style now. But I do think that ladies, you need to consider how you dress and just not to be a stumbling block to your brethren. And the same thing with men, because I've definitely seen men in the church with very tight pants. I sometimes I'm like, did he just roll in here with his wife's pants on, man? Like, that's not even okay. Like, I can see everything that's going on with you. That's not it's not good. It's not attractive. And especially if you have kids, like you want to be a good example for your kids as well. And think about your wife or your girlfriend or whatever. Like, does she want other women staring at your junk? I mean, this is a relevant question. Like, come on, you have to worry about whether you're inciting less inside of other women too, because just because somebody's in the church doesn't mean that they don't have those kinds of issues. So you have to be cognizant of those kinds of things. But yeah, um, and there's so many resources. You can go to Instagram, you can go to YouTube. You can find out how to modestly dress without, you know, looking like somebody's piece of crumbled up underwear or something like that. I mean, it's not impossible. And I do think the Israelites, you know, not all of them. I do think they wore pretty nice, clean garments and they were pretty. Like God actually said with uh, the priests that he gave them these certain garments for comeliness so they would be attractive looking, you know. But they were still wearing long garments, long, beautiful tunics. And uh, they had the breastplate and they had these turbans, like they were still modestly dressed. But yeah, guys, just be aware of these things. I know maybe it doesn't seem like a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to God. He cares how you're influencing others and he cares how you carry yourself. So I hope you guys receive this message. Be blessed. Bye.